Hi, and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn, and I am joined by my vivacious wife. He just looks for adjectives. It's ridiculous, actually. Hmm. Maybe I'll take it back then. Fine, you're not vivacious. You're lovely. Thank you. Yeah, she likes lovely. Margaret Quinn. Yes. And we're here to do a show that you really have been wanting to do for quite a little while. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of interest in this. First of all, the show, we should say, is about gluten-free beers. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of interest in, in gluten-free, uh, I guess, beers in general, uh, or beer specifically, but more more generally, gluten-free diets and things like that. Um, I'm, I personally think the jury's still sort of out on whether or not gluten-free is, you know, can write for some hate mail here. I, well, as widespread of an issue I agree. Yeah. Um, as as some people believe it to be. I do obviously I think there's a lot of folks out there who do have real issues with gluten, but I'm not sure that that um, gluten is the evil that many people portray it to be. It almost feels like it's like the new low fat or, you know, um, whole Cholesterol. whole grain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like Trans to fat. me it's like it's the buzzword of the, the moment as far as diet products go. Regardless. The gluten-free beer market has been booming. Uh, it's a big problem for people who do have celiac disease. That is uh, the disease that allows or doesn't allow people to digest or break down gluten. And gluten is in many of the kind of staple grains that we think of, like barley and wheat. And I think in a, it causes like serious like ulcers or something in their oh, stomach sure. or yeah. it, it messes them up. Yeah, that's a so there are people who legitimately have it and have it bad. And you know, and it's something you can also develop. So anyway, um, you know, people want their beer. They need their beer and the market has responded and it's actually booming. I mean it is every time I go into the store it seems like there's another gluten free beer out there. Um, I've got some of the or one of the first that I ever seen here, but I just wanted to get a large swath of the gluten-free beers, but I really wanted to get what I felt were probably the best on the market uh, and also somewhat available at widely least for, as for well. us, at, at, us in the Midwest. I think a couple of these may not be widely available outside of the Midwest, but um, we'll see. Yeah, I, I, yeah. so uh, we'll start from my left, your right, to my right, your left. <laughs> but and I'm, I'm always right. I'll be here all night, folks. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So why don't we start with New Grist from uh, Lakefront? Yeah. Lakefront, I believe, has some pretty decent distribution as well. And this was one of the first um, gluten-free beers I remember seeing on the market. Uh, they've been around for a while, uh, Lakefront in general, since I think the late 80s. I, they're from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yeah, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Been around for a while. And... This uh, new grist is based off sorghum, I believe. Most of them are based on sorghum and rice extract. Just quick comment there. Look how full that bottle is. Mm -hmm. Dear Lord. Yeah, that's good. Uh huh. It's value. Value add. <laughs> uh, and, you know, this has won uh, several awards. I think on the six pack, it actually shows a great taste of the, uh, I'm not great, um, Great American Beer Fest gold medal. So it, it has won gold. So let's see, you know, started off with a bang. The I mean, color yeah, of the this. The first thing you noticed, it almost looks like you're pouring like fizzy lemonade well, or something. I, was gonna, I mean, I liken it to a, a white wine. It just looks like a, Excellent like, a call. like an oaky Chardonnay or something. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's, were it not for the, the head yeah, it, uh, or, or the carbonation, I mean, it's brilliantly clear. Yeah. Like vibrantly, like, well, it's like straw color, mm -hmm. light straw, the color of almost like some of those diet beers that you would expect to, you know, like the Michelob Ultras or whatever. Yeah. Really, really light. Unbelievably light. It actually looks really pretty in the glass. Like it you does said, look it's, pretty. It's, it's brilliantly clear. I think white wine was a good way to. It smells pretty good too. I mean, it kind of has a lemony floral yeah. without being like pledgy or artificial. It's got a nice natural lemon soda. Yeah, it smells. Smell it. Lemon soda is a really good descriptor. I was going to describe it as spritzy, was it? Which mm -hmm. isn't a smell necessarily, but you know, that's that's the adjective that comes to my mind. It just smells very fresh yeah. and kind of clean and and bright. Very clean. Um, and lemon soda is right on. It's, it yeah. smells like those Whole Foods uh, Italian lemon sodas that you get. 
Yeah, but there's also a little bit underneath it as well. A little bit of something a little more green. Well, I actually think there's a, like, I, yeah. I do get, I don't, a faint like graininess out of it yeah. a little bit in there too. Let's give it a taste. Oh. Mm. Mm. Very light. Um, it's got a weird kind of, it's, it's got some acid to it. It's I, an acidic beer. I, I, I'm not, I, it, I get l like a light molasses note okay. out of this. Do you, you don't get that at all? Molasses. I, I'm not sure I, I, I think of molasses as such, as like heavier flavors, but a light molasses. Man, yeah, there's something very odd going on in this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I've had molasses. I've cooked with molasses on occasion, and I and I've had it, you know, as a kid, maybe with pancakes or something. My mom's from the south, so it just kind of happened that way. But it, I, I'm picking up some of that strangeness, and that's it could be the sorghum. How about this? Apple, apple skin, acidic, a little bit of lemon, very clean. It's got like a, a, a bit of an astringency to it. It finishes very dry. There is no sweetness in this beer at all. Yeah. I'm getting some apple, apple, like red apple skin to it as well. Yeah, I could, I could picture that. I mean, this actually might be a beer, uh, aside from people who have gluten issues, but it could be a beer for somebody who really is into wine and doesn't like beer and, you know, kind of gives you that, uh, I don't like any beer line. Um, if they like white wine, there's a chance that they could like that because I do agree that it is, you know, very reminiscent of white wine with the, with the dryness and like, kind of like that lemony quality of it. Yeah. Um... It's really, really light. There's. Mm. I just feel like I can't get past that that odd. Uh, what I'm gonna chalk up to the sorghum taste in it. I don't. I don't like that at all. Okay. Yeah. Ch uh, chalky is actually not a bad way to describe it. You said chalk it up to, but it kind of has a chalky flavor to it. Uh, I'm gonna go. 85, I mean, uh, 84. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's nothing bad. It's just so light. There's really not much going on. It's got a nice spritzy quality to it, but it's almost like drinking soda water. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go. I'll. I think 84 is about right. I was gonna. I was gonna go around there as well. Um, it's not. I mean, I, I certainly appreciate the the execution of the beer. Yeah. Um, but there there is sort of an off flavor in that that I am just not personally enjoying. Yeah. Well put. You're on the ball today. Uh, the next is the Estrella Dam Duara, da Daura, I should say. Uh, this is from uh, Barcelona. Hmm. It is their sorghum-free beer. And... You mean uh, uh, gluten-free? Gluten-free beer. And this one has one. They claim that this has been proven to be the best gluten-free beer in the world. It's won the World Beer Championship gold, International Beer Tasting gold, you know, some other gold. So, um, okay. oh, can I take a step back though? One beer that is, one brewery that is notably absent from here. Uh, yesterday or two days ago were the World Beer Cup Championships, maybe three days ago. And at the World Beer Cup, a new gluten-free brewery called Glutenberg, which I hope is a play on Steve Gutenberg. It's called Glutenberg. They won silver, bronze, gold in the gluten-free category. They swept the category. They're new. They weren't around in the last oh, wow. World Beer Cup. They weren't, Very they weren't new. there. Yeah, which the World Beer Cup happens every two years. Uh, I believe uh, the Estrella won gold previous year, but I'm going to get in touch with those guys, see if I can get a hold of some of their beers. And if I can, I will definitely have it on the show. Yeah. And maybe whichever one we like the most, we'll put it up against yeah. them. Well, yeah, because they must be putting out some really good gluten-free beer if they're going to win They every... swept yeah. the category. Yeah, I've great. never heard of that happening. Yeah. So that, that's really impressive. Uh, big ups to the Gutenberg people. I mean, that that's really cool. So anyway, uh, but until Gutenberg came around, these guys, well, these guys still say they're the best. That's so. some water in here still. There yeah. we go. Oh, me too. So. All right. 
Wow. So, uh, Spanish beer. I, I, yep, I'm a Spanish beer. Very surprised by mm -hmm. this. Is this. Is this the first Spanish beer we've had on the show? It absolutely is. Wow. Uh huh. And it's gluten free. Gluten free. Yep. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Dom is the name of the brewery. Okay. Uh, I believe so. Maybe it's Estrella. So this again looks, uh, you know, this it's very similar to the um, lakefront in in the glass. It's a little more golden. Yeah, it is. It, like I said, with the oaky Chardonnay, I think that might have been a little bit. Um, uh, that was not quite exactly the right descriptor, but this one could definitely be. Yeah, no, the other one was Chardonnay. much more like a Sauvignon Blanc or something like really light. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this is like a oaky Chardonnay, and it's got a little bit more of a of a head to it as well. You know, also mm. nice looking beer, but very crystal clear. Yeah. And uh, yeah, very 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 light. <sighs> All right, well, this one at least smells like a beer. I, and I was going to say, this actually reminds me of a Trumer Pills or like a Kolsch or something like that a little bit. Um, okay, a little bit. The qualifier was okay. Well, yeah. it's, it's I, you know. Yeah, uh, but I, I, I have to no, no. scrape. And you are absolutely right. It, it has a little bit of that kind of biscuity quality yeah. to it and the minerality in the back end. You can mm -hmm. feel like the, the water has got some, you know, some hardness to it. Yeah, I think it smells pretty good, actually. Uh, might have a little bit of oxidation. Do you get a little bit of papery quality in there? Yeah, maybe. It's certainly not old. We're now in May, and it says it's good through uh, September is yeah. the best buy date, so. Yeah, I mean, I might get a little bit of paper cardboard, but that, that's that's a stretch. I'm going to give it a taste. Yeah, I'm getting a hint of oxidation or a papery quality to it, but overall, nice kind of like bready, um, hmm. very light. Wow. It's oxidized, right? Paper. Yeah. It's papery. It's a little oxidized, which is a shame. Because I think the bones of this beer are, are much more pleasant than the than the new grist from Lakefront. Yeah. It's, I agree. It actually tastes more like a beer to me. I'm not getting that strange sorghum flavor or whatever nope. that was in the previous. Nope. Um, and I'm not sure what... It, it doesn't say... It just says lager beer. It doesn't say what it's from or anything like that. Yeah, I've heard some things about it, but I, I'm not sure that they, they actually brew it like a beer, um, but somehow in the brewing process, they can get the uh, gluten out of it. I, I don't know. I couldn't find anything about it, so I didn't look very hard. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's not bad. Mm -hmm. It's so light that the oxidation kind of shows through a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's a little papery, a little honeyed, um, but yeah, I agree. It's it's super light. Again, completely dry. A weird bitterness on this one as well. I'm not a, f a fan of, of the bitterness. Um, uh, it kind of has like almost like a medicinal or chemically bitterness in the on the back. Yeah, end. I think I get that at the very back end. There is sort yeah. of a strange aftertaste. But uh, I, that said, I, I do like it uh, more than the uh, new grist. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm gonna go 86 with this beer. Okay. Also very light, uh, very drinkable, even oxidized. I like it more than the new grist. Yeah, I totally agree. So we're right on the same page today. Okay. Cool. Moving behavior. right along. Moving yeah, right gave, along. Gave a little rinse. Uh, another so, so Midwestern beer. So now we have beer. an actual, like, real beer. Uh, yeah, with um, pretty good distribution yeah. as well. And this is the Prairie Path. Cool story about this beer. They've been brewing this beer, and it's been gluten-free for years. They just never knew it. <laughs> <They've>, well, and <laughs> uh, they didn't make a gluten-free beer. They found out a beer they've been brewing was gluten-free. So, step back for a moment. So, Prairie Path by Two Brothers uh, Brewing Company out in Warrenville, Illinois. Yes. Um, so, how how is it gluten-free and they didn't know it? Uh, so, what happened was they had used, originally when they started uh, formulating this beer, brewing this beer, they used an enzyme. They added an enzyme to the beer to help clarify it. Um, my guess would be it uses, um, it says Belgian malt, uh, balanced by saws and golding hops. Um, my guess is to help clear out some of the protein haze. Yeah, yeah, sure. And it also happened to, I guess, break down gluten. And huh. they sent it to a, a laboratory, and it came back at like five 
parts per million of gluten or whatever, and that's well below the threshold. I think it needs to be under 20 to be considered gluten-free. Hmm. So, yeah, so and then they made an announcement, and now just recently they actually added a little gluten-free emblem to yeah. their six-packs. But before, it was just kind of like... Under this is also yeah. gluten free. Yeah, yeah. It, and and that is something interesting because you never well I guess now you do but you never really see that advertised as a gluten free beer. Um, so that that's probably smart marketing on their well, side. Well, they didn't know until well, recently. But yeah, like you said, they didn't even know. So that's that's very interesting that that enzyme breaks down the gluten. I wonder if more breweries are going to head in that direction, Who considering knows? that gluten free is such a hot commodity right now. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, this one I think is uh, a very similar color to the uh, the, the Daura. Yeah. Um, maybe a little bit more yellowy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But all these are brilliantly clear, so yeah. that enzyme's working and clearing out their beer quite mm -hmm. well. And a nice kind of fluffy head, but just really straw color, like mm -hmm. brilliant straw. Right. What do you know? Hops. <laughs> That's like the. Uh... Well, I mean, yeah, but I think there definitely is like a, an, a backbone to it as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not saying that's all I get. There certainly isn't an IPA. No. I was no. just saying you can actually smell hops in Well, this yeah, beer. and that's the first time we've really seen it so far on the table, I think. Yeah, it's nice. It has a nice floral, um, green flavor to it, like herbal, like um, basil, mm -hmm. um, some kind of like the lighter, greener, brighter herbs, and. Um, Hmm. Maybe a little lemongrass, something like that. <laughs> wow, you're on the ball today, apparently, or your nose is. Yeah. yeah that's that's impressive. Yeah, I, I I almost get like a minty quality out of it, a little yep. bit. Like, yeah, I I can I can see where you're going with that. Yeah, like a wintergreen, like a white mint. Mm -hmm. This, to me, is the first one where I can actually taste a little... Uh, Malt? Yeah, yeah. Taste, taste... Or yeast. Taste, yeah. more, again, kind of more like beer. Um, mm -hmm. Although I do get I do get some significant bitterness on the, on the tail end of it as well. Yeah. Yeah, very light yet balanced beer. Uh, all the elements are there in extremely light amounts. This beer is best by July, uh, end of July, almost August, and uh, we're just beginning May right now, so it should be plenty fresh. Um, just as it's a golden ale, 5%, 25 IBU, so. I mean, for us to taste 25 IBU this much, you know, you can tell that the malt bill's also pretty low. That's true, yeah. And I think this is a really good um, kind of... Uh, gateway beer or whatever you want to, might, might want to call it for somebody who may drink macros. Um, this is just, it just got a lot more flavor than a macro, but you can kind of see that it's in that same vein of just very easy drinking beer. Very easy drinking. Yeah, I think a gateway beer or, you know, the Miller Lite drinker who That's what came I'm down with celiacs. No, oh, that's what oh, I was oh, saying. You know, right. they wanna, they're, they're going to want to go to this. Right. Um, again, I'm, I'm getting kind of a weird bitterness. I wonder if that's just like... Yeah, I get that. I get that. My I get body that. chemistry, or something, and that sounds ridiculous, but no, I, I get some bitterness on the back end. I don't think it's a weird bitterness. Yeah, definitely some some bitterness. Yeah. I really wish the Dauro was fresh because I, I think it might be better than this. Yeah. But as it is, this is the best beer we've had yet. Yeah, I have to agree. Uh, I'll go. Um, 87. I don't think it's much better. Yeah. No, I'll go 86, 87. I think we were kind of giving this guy the benefit of the doubt because it did taste oxidized. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, decent beer. Not mind blowing. Mm -hmm. But you know, a nice easy drinker. Yeah, for you know, a, on a hot for a summer, summer day. day. Yeah, I would. I would totally agree. Yeah, gluten free or not, you know, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't mind having. Uh, really, either of these two on a, a, a nice hot day, Have assuming this is somewhat fresh. Right. The final one is sort of a uh, a twist on the gluten free idea here. It's uh, Dogfish Head's Tweezin Ale. This isn't your daddy's gluten free. Oh, your daddy didn't have gluten free. This isn't your 
considerably older brothers gluten free bear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but you know, Tweezernail is whoa, it's it's a little fizzy. Uh, Tweezernail is interesting because it's it not only is it gluten free, um, it's you know again based on sorghum like like I think the lake front was, um, but it's also got some strawberries and buckwheat honey in it as well. So I think we're gonna see you know my guess is we would see sort of the incredibly the, effervescent. It's, it is. I thought it was gonna it's overflow when we opened it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we'll. I expect to see like this kind of the the skeleton of the you know the the previous ones, but I'm really hoping that 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 uh, strawberry and buckwheat honey honey come through. As yeah, well. so it's the dogfish take on a gluten free beer. I it's mean, all they don't, centered. They they don't do anything normal. They're gonna yeah. add you know strawberries. It also has an awesome packaging. Uh, it's hard to describe it, but it's got. Um, at first, I thought they were like, oh, they change it seasonally the recipe. Then I realized that they just there's. They change the labels and it's all four sides of their four pack. Mm -hmm. It says like a late autumn, early winter gluten free beer or right. a well, late winter, early spring gluten free beer. And it all has like just different pictures of a strawberry and a bumblebee, kind of like. Cute. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I couldn't figure out what tweezin meant. Like, I'm, it, I, it made no sense to me. And then I did some research about the beer and found out that this is a beer that they, they, release in sort of the 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 off seasons like so you know January this came out in January um, you know they're gonna put it out at, at seasonal over four times a year so I guess seasonally but kind mm -hmm. of in, in in between the major seasons. oh I didn't know that but that's definitely what their well, packaging tweezers, shows like between seasons uh -huh. you know, tweezers, yeah. so that, that kind cool. of makes sense yeah it's also the first beer I've ever seen that has nutritional facts on it <laughs> serving size one bottle calories 170 total grams of fat sodium total carbohydrates <laughs> But see, yeah. th this is what ingredients: water, sorghum syrup, strawberries, honey, hops, yeast. The fact that it has the the nutrition panel on it is kind of what makes me nervous about gluten free stuff. It, it, there's a certain consumer in mind, is all I'm mm -hmm. saying, um, and I'm not sure. Yeah, whatever. That's my commentary. But anyway, I'm excited to try this beer. Wow, this one actually incredibly looks incredibly fizzy. Yeah. And I think fizzy is the right word to say. It's like big fizzy bubbles. Yeah, it is. Um, hmm. Makes me a little nervous, actually, but we'll see. Uh, this was bottled uh, like a, January 30th, very end of January, so we're at 90 days. Um, you know, still perfectly fine for this beer. It should be. Um, do they say what the alcohol is? 6% alcohol? Yeah, it should be totally fine, especially since it's not a highly hopped beer. Um, that that fizzy head dissipates pretty quickly. It, sure it reminded does. me of like a soda, the yeah. way like big bubbles fizzed up and then yeah. kind of settled down. You're right. Um, I think it's a tad darker than the ones that we've seen before. Yes, it's got a little bit more of a reddish hue, pinkish. Yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of like an orangey, yellow, pinky kind of color. It's a beautiful color to it the beer. It actually is. Yeah. Um, and when you you know, rouse a little bit. It, it looks nice. I think it takes the cake for the nicest the looking beer. Yeah, all, yes. all of them have looked yeah. pretty nice. Yeah. So let's, uh. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I wonder if it's infected. When it started bubbling up like that, I wondered if, uh, it was infected. Yeah, because I, I mean, I always kind of jump the gun on things. So when you were like looking at it and opining on the color, I, I took a sniff of it and my eyebrows raised. Um, yeah, I think this beer might. I, I don't know. I've mm -hmm. never had it before. This does mm, it smells like an infection. Yeah. It smells like there's uh, a Acetobacter or something. Whoops, infection. Well, explain to the layperson what that would mean if it had Acetobacter, because. It's either I, that or... Yeah, I think you and I have a, have a thought in our head. So I, I'm getting a lot of kind of vinegary notes to it. Um, it's hard to kind of dive in and figure out what's the beer and what's the infection because I've never had the beer before. Um, and that's that was my fear as well. When I first took a whiff of it, I thought, oh, this getting smells Getting like a very plasticky, off. like a plastic, like um, vinyl kind of smell to it. I didn't want to judge it because it does have the strawberry in it, and I thought, okay, maybe that strawberry is coming into play in a very weird way. I I thought I smelled butter in it too, but I've had this thing in my butter. Head. Yeah, I mean, you know what? It might be diacetyl because I I have misidentified diacetyl as uh, acetobacter. Mm -hmm. Diacetyl is a much more common flavor. 
Uh, although that would not be from bottling. That would that wouldn't be an infection. That would just be a brew brew house problem. And and I I, I wouldn't expect that to happen with at Dogfish Head. I mean I've never had anything that has diacetyl in it from Dogfish Head or anything that even tastes off. Um, so Some, I mean, should we taste it and 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 just see if? Yeah, I mean, it's probably. I do get now. I do get some strawberry back in there. <laughs> now that I've been smelling it for a while. Yeah, I mean, but it's you know what it is. Oh, you're a guy. You don't know what I'm going to talk about. You ever have uh, strawberry shortcake toys as a kid, girls? You know what I'm talking about. Uh, no, stra I... strawberry shortcake and and like you you scratched it and it smelled like strawberry. All I'm guessing is some sort of artificial strawberry yeah. on a plastic toy. <laughs> yes, it's exactly what it was. That's what this smells like. This smells like. A, a, a strawberry scratch and sniff sitting on some sort of like rubber doll. That, well, that's pretty much what it yeah. was. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. so comb its little hair. And... Oof, man, this is tough. Mm. There's a lot going on in this. It's a lot going a, on. A lot of complexity. You don't get the nastiness till the very end. A lot of complexity. Man, I mean, I don't know. Well, okay, so it starts off with like a very kind of tangy acidicness or yeah. acidity that I get, like kind of right on your tongue. It's very bright and kind of tangy, which I thought was actually pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost like a sour in a way with that first little tang. Mm -hmm. um, Quite a bit of strawberry flavor as well. Um, green, bright strawberry. It's not like a lush, ripe strawberry. Um, very clean. Max. Oh, thank you, Max. Um, it's got, like you said, the acidity is in place of the bitterness. Um, but there's something weird going on there. Yeah, I think, it, so at the very end, it finishes with a, to me, kind of that artificial strawberry flavor on the very back end. Yeah. And then, I mean, af the aftertaste of it, that's where I start getting the that off flavor again i think as, as you mentioned it kind of haunts you at the very Our dog is going absolutely bonkers yeah right okay now. well so we're gonna yeah, wrap yeah. it up sorry so at the very at the very tail end that that odd you know kind of funkiness haunts you again i think at, in the aftertaste right right at the end um i don't know what to make of this beer i don't either uh i don't maybe like as much as that one, I mean, no. less. Uh, yeah, it's it's tough to smell. It's yeah, tough to smells. smell. So uh, therefore, to me, that means you really it's it's tough to drink, even though it, it tastes better than it smells. But no, I wouldn't enjoy that if I if I ordered it at a bar. I, I would not enjoy that because it's just so hard to smell mm -hmm. as you taste it. Um, so yeah, I would say as far as rating this, I would go. 83? I mean... It... I'm going to go 85. I'm going to go a little higher. Okay. Um, you know, the taste isn't bad. Uh, it's... It smells pretty bad. Um, but it's not horrible. It's not like that coffee IPA. True. And, you know, it, it's, it's bright. It's got a nice acid to it. It's got a little bit of fruit. A lot going on. Um, yeah, I'll go 85, hmm. which I think is what was what I gave that. Is that what I gave it? I don't remember. 84, 85, 86 or something? Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't matter. So the winner, Maybe though. 84. The winner today, is it the two brothers? I think it is the two brothers, but it's not a pretty, it's not a very strong winner. It's not a strong winner. We may have a have a contender back here with the Estrella. I think we need to taste some Glutenberg is what we needed to do. Yeah, you're right. Um, You know, all these beers are fine. They're not gonna wow you guys. I'm, 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 I'll just say it right now. Um, they're fine. They're drinkable. They're not really sippable. They're not really to be savored. They're to be kind of drank and enjoyed while you're, you know, out at a ball game or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, bowling or something. So there you have it. A uh, little bit of news. A little tidbit. I've decided to put an audio version of the show up there. I've heard that some people prefer to listen to podcasts rather than watch them. I think this sh show pretty much works either way, video or audio. So 
Um, I'm going to put them all up there all at once. You're going to get like all 100 plus episodes all at once, and then I'll just keep adding them uh, to both the audio and the video feed. So I'll let you know when that's up, but look out for that. Until then, please leave your comments and all that goodness to um, at thecraftbeertemple.com where I think is probably the best place to, to put it. That's our website. And uh, if not, you know, Facebook, Twitter, all that goes up. Or you can just send me an email. Um, info at craftbeertemple, craftbeertemple.com. Craftbeertemple.com. Hmm. Was that Freudian? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks so much again for watching. As always, we will see you next time. But until then, we have to go find some good beer to drink. And hopefully you already have some. <laughs>